Ooh. You know, yesterday, I, uh, I was in my kitchen and I was uh, cooking some ribs. And um, I, I heard this, this, this really sort of um, deep rumbling sound um, uh, coming from outside. And it was like, scared me. Like, I didn't know what it was. I, I, it's been, I don't remember hearing this for a long time. I mean, it, it kind of triggered a bit of a, a, a memory, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. So I went, I went to the door, the front door, and I opened it out, up and, and looked out and, and, uh, I saw this, this, um, this big flash in the sky, you know, and it kind of scared me a bit. Cause trying to remember when the last time I saw that was and then water came started to, to fall like like a shower like from the sky and then I put two and two together I thought, wait a minute that flash in the sky causes the thunder and it's doing that because it's rain and it all came back to me. It's like, oh my God, this is a thunderstorm. I haven't seen one of these in like five years. <laughs> so it rained for like 10 minutes and it's like, oh, well, is that all we get? <laughs> the grass is all dead around here. It's crazy. But there's droughts all over the place. Anyway, happy homebrew weekday, guys. There's been some talk about changing the name. I still haven't decided what to do, but cheers. That that head's going to die down. It's humid. Um, even in my house, I mean, I've got air conditioners running all over the place. And this is just not going to stick around because of the humidity. But, um, and plus, it, uh, it's a little overcarbonated. So, um, you know, it, it needs to settle in a little bit. I just kegged it yesterday. But it's a Cooper Stout. And it's actually quite, quite enjoyable. I, fairly impressed with this beer. It's very good, especially for just a simple, um, you know, can, pre-hopped. Um, certainly a drinkable beer, absolutely drinkable. And I didn't do anything to it. I just did it sort of the way they say to do it. You know, I added a little extra stuff, but it's certainly a drinkable beer. I don't understand why people have such a fussy palate. You know, this beer is not bad at all. It is good. It's good beer. Now, I've been trying some different beers lately. I've been going to the, because I thought, you know, maybe my, maybe there's something wrong with my tongue, you know. So I've been going to the beer store and I've been noticing they've been having quite a few different craft beers on the, in the, in the, like the refrigerator, like the freezer, fr well, you know, whatever it is, the display refrigerator thing, whatever it's called. So I've been picking out different ones, you know, and saying, okay, this one looks good and that one looks pretty good and that, I've heard of that one. And I've been trying these beers. And I don't, I don't review them because I'm not a beer reviewer. So I have just, just been enjoying them, you know, on my own, off camera. I have to tell you that this, the beers that you can make, I know I keep repeating myself all the time and I won't spend long on this, but the beers that you can make from simple ingredients t can, still taste better than some of the store-bought craft beers that you can get I don't know I mean it's no I nothing wrong with my tongue nothing at all because there's some really good beers out there that I think the only way you could brew those is to really get in there and do stuff like pH balances and you know twelve dollars for a thing of yeast and you know really go in there and get a nice big all-grain um, um, uh, what do you call, you know, grain bill going on, you know, one of these puppies, you know. Yeah, that's going to be brewed soon too, that that baby. And, but for the most part, if you can't, if, you, if the beer that you drink has to be absolutely top-notch all the time, 
I mean, beer's beer. I mean, there's shitty beer out there. There's excellent beer out there. And there's a lot of stuff in between that's fine. It's fine to drink it. It's, it's not, you know, the best in the whole wide world. But there's nothing wrong with it. And that's what this is. Of course, the head's gone. <laughs> here, here I stand, and it's making a liar out of me. But it tastes good. So cheers. It's still very sessionable, too, so that's good. Anyway, um, I set the camera up here because um, I wanted to... Uh, sitting on top of a computer that I just rebuilt, so... Uh, that's a good... It's a little quad-core computer that I'm going to put on my workbench when I get everything all moved around. It's going to be a, like a second computer for when I'm over here brewing and stuff like that. Beer Smith on it and whatnot. Maybe I can even broadcast from here so that I can do stuff right you know right over here on this end of the basement and be broadcasting live but behind me you can see this green screen and um, I put this green screen up a couple of years ago for two reasons one because the wall back here like this is concrete okay okay now the, these these houses are old these houses were built World War II. They were civilian houses. Okay, so the uh, the civilians, you know, the uh, the soldiers would go to the where wherever they go, and the, their families would live in these houses. And they were nearly bulldozed uh, about 20 years ago. Um, but then somebody decided to um, take over and make it into a co-op, and re renovate and refurbish and rebuild the houses. So when they did that, this window, I think, used to come down to here. I think they re-graded the land or something. I don't know. Anyways, because you can see it. You can see if you take this, this green screen down, you can see it. There's a seam where they might have put extra concrete where the window used to be. But what's happening is that behind here, there's moisture coming through the concrete. And it makes the paint peel off the wall. So when I shoot, and I, I don't, I don't own the house. I rent, so I can't do anything about it. There's nothing they can do. I've, I painted over it. It just keeps on happening. So whatever. Um, so it, it's, I, I don't want to be shooting <laughs> videos here, you know, with where behind me it looks like a cave, right? And I was criticized a few years ago where you know, what are you doing? You're down there. You're falling apart down there, and you're brewing beer. And, uh, uh, you know, so anyway, so I put the green screen up because I thought, well, not only will it cover the, 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 you know, the thing on the wall, but it will also um, provide me with a way of, like, having, like, extra video back here. Because, you know, green screen, you do chroma key. You can, you can, when you do your editing, you can put something on the green part, a video, like a close-up or, a, you know, a background or whatever. And I did that a few times, but it turned out to be... Um, just a real pain in the ass. Like, as you can see, I got my wart chiller hanging up here. This is my Mantis wart chiller. And uh, there's a shadow here. So you can't, you can't get the proper lighting unless you've got a certain amount of space. So I don't use the green screen, but I, I left it there because I, I'm covering up that horrible looking mess that's back there. Well, my wife came up with a fantastic idea. Right? Now I'm not going to hang tools on it. I'm going to hang all of my brewing stuff. I got spoons. I've got you know stuff that's got you know there's a funnel hold hole there so you can hang that up, right? Right? You know, I've got all kinds of stuff and there's all kinds of hooks and little shelves and things you can put up there. So, it's a little pegboard. So, that's what we're going to do. I was supposed to have it done by now. But it was, it's been so hot around here and so humid um, that, you know, my, we just didn't feel like going anywhere today to, to get the, the board. I got the, this is, this is the stuff, like the hooks and shit, but um, uh, I still have to buy the, the board. So we're going to get that, hopefully have that up by next week. There's, you know, I've got stuff 
just hanging around here, you know, just hanging off stuff, bumping my head on things and getting, you know, get, get, get up there, hurry up. Anyway, so that's what's going on there. So looking forward, looking forward to that. I so disappointed today when we didn't go out and get those, but it was so hot. I mean, it, it's been like really hot over here where I live lately, like Celsius, 32 degrees. So what's 30, 60, 90, close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And then there's humidity on top of that. And it was like so humid yesterday that like we have air conditioning in the house. The outside of the windows were steamed up. The outside, not the inside. <laughs> that's, how, that's how humid it was outside. Oh my. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, the last thing I want to, uh, this is a bit of a subject, and I want to discuss this a little bit. Sorry, I got not, not, a, not enough sleep last night, so my eyes water, and my eyes water, they, they sting on the sides, and I get allergies or something, I don't know. This will fix it. I was so busy yesterday, did all kinds of stuff. Oh, I made some pickles, some fermented dill pickles. Oh, these babies are going to be amazing. And one of them has cayenne pepper, so we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, still want to brew a ginger beer. I want to buy fresh ginger. I don't know if I asked this before on the video, or maybe I posted something in a 17 Brew Crew form. I don't remember. But... um. Five gallons of, let's say, you know, Pilsner kind of style beer. How much ginger? Fresh ginger. How much would you guys put in? I want it to have the. I want it to have a bite. I don't want it to to kill me when I'm drinking it, but I want it to have a nice ginger beer bite. So if anyone's got any ideas about that, post a comment down below or go to the Seventeen Brew Crew forum and go into the one where it says ask Craig and post it in there and uh, that way everybody can read it and it's I mean either way either or so or both it's fine so but anyway um, the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is somebody asked me if I would do a video on yeast starters and um, mm. excuse me yeast starter if you don't already know and I'm sure most of you do but it's when you you take um, uh, a vial of liquid yeast or well any you can do it with any yeast dry or, or liquid and you um, you take some dry malt extract and you get a little container and you you make a little mini beer and uh, you put your yeast in there and the yeast grows and gets all happy and parties away in there and then the next day you add that to your your beer which I don't have any brewing at the moment but I will have soon barley wine coming up um, so you make a little yeast starter and it, it gives you more yeast cells um, and so when you pitch your yeast in there there's lots of yeast there's lots of cells and it can just start partying away and nobody's stressing out so um, that's what a yeast starter is so I okay yeast starters you don't here's the here's the information that I have obtained um, spoke to John Palmer last year, had an interview on here on YouTube. You can find that. Just type in Craig Tube, John Palmer. I'm sure it'll come up. I'm pretty sure we talked about this briefly. Um, if, if it wasn't me, it was somebody else. But I remember somebody saying that with a yeast starter, you don't have to make a yeast starter with dry yeast. Because dry yeast has a, a pretty large cell count. Okay. So, um, it's not necessary to make a starter. Now, to rehydrate the dry yeast is a good idea. Um, I don't always do it, but it's not hard to do. And, you know, it's, it's nice to see that the yeast is alive. And when you know, rehydrate, you can see the sort of activity going on in the, in the cup or measuring cup, whatever you do it in. Um, you can see it. And it's like, okay, that yeast is good, especially... Dry yeast, you know, when it's older and maybe even a little bit past its best before date, rehydrating it is a great idea. 
uh, helps you uh, tell whether it's still alive or whether it's you know gone belly up okay so just keep that in mind rehydrating yeast is easy you just get some like 95 degree water about you know half a cup or something like that and you put your yeast in you cover it in tin and like you know you cover it with something sanitize everything of course and you know you let it sit for half an hour 20 minutes half an hour until it it makes like a it looks it look like coffee like you know coffee with cream in it and you'll see foam on top and that's that means the yeast is in good shape so anyway but as far as a yeast starter goes you only really need to make a yeast starter when you have liquid yeast because liquid yeast has less of a cell count than dry yeast does this is what i'm told this is what i've the conversations that we've had so um i don't okay so people have all these elaborate setups they've got like the flask you know the little stir plate thing and they put their you know they make their starter and a little magnet goes around in there okay we'll talk about that in a minute i don't buy liquid yeast because it's too expensive i'm um, sorry i brew to save money and liquid yeast you know there's there's so much variety like if you're looking for a specific strain to make a specific beer like you know a, some belgian thing or whatever you know then you might need um a certain type of yeast because yeast does you know make a big difference in the way the beer sort of you know comes out in the end um so all the different strains that are out there there's much more variety in liquid yeast than there is in dry yeast I, that I'll give you that okay so if you're looking for making a, a beer that fits you know really tightly into a style then you're you might need to go out and buy a liquid yeast you know um, it's twelve dollars for something like that where I live anyway so for one little tube of it um, and then you have to make a starter so then you're looking at some dry malt extract and whatever um, and I don't usually use it so I don't make starters um, I have done it but you know that was a couple of years ago and like I said because I don't buy liquid yeast I don't make starters so um, I can make a starter with dry yeast just to show you how it's done but um, there's so many videos on YouTube of how to do it I don't know whether it'd be worth my while let me know and we'll see what we can do okay um, if you want me to do it, I'll do it. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll dump it into something or whatever. Some sort of a brew of some sort. Now, here's where the stir plate thing came to mind when I was thinking about this. I know we all like our gadgets. Um, and certainly if, you know, if I found, if I went to the, the thrift store and I found a stir plate for two bucks, I'd buy it. Okay? But... Has anyone ever really done an experiment with, you know, like say a 10 gallon batch of beer, splitting it in half and doing two yeast starters with the same yeast, one with a stir plate and one without? Do these things really make that much of a difference? I, I, I mean, you could just walk by it once in a while and give it a little swirl. I guess it's, it's a convenience thing knowing that it's happening all by itself and you don't have to worry about it but um i would really be interested in finding out whether it actually makes that much of a difference i'd have to really be i'd love to know and it would i'd love to know if anyone's ever done a, an experiment um you know they buy the stir plate they put it all together and it works i mean it goes around it makes a little brrr, you know and then they use their yeast and they drink their beer and they love their beer um but if they didn't have the stir plate, would the beer still taste as good? That's my question. There's a lot of areas in home brewing that, you know, get talked about and hyped over in forums and uh, in, on YouTube. And I think there's a lot of areas where people really need to maybe say to themselves, is this just a lot of, you know, hype or is it really important? 
to do certain things. Um, like for instance, I did an experiment, I guess it was last year, where, what was it now? I took, um, yeah, okay. So I, I had two, two things of, I had two things of beer like this. This is probably dusty, but anyway. The one that was cloudy carbonated a lot faster and it cleared in the bottle just fine. The one that was clear was still flat after like three weeks in the bottle and exact same priming sugar and everything. So anyway, experiments like that, I mean, you really have to do it yourself. So people who, you know, they brew their beer in a, in a uh, fermenter for, you know, two weeks or uh, 10 days or whatever, then they, they rack it into a carboy and they let it sit for, you know, and get nice and clear, but then when they bottle it, where's all the yeast? It's all sitting on the bottom of the carboy. It's great if you're kegging, because if you keg your beer, you don't need the yeast. You just, you know, you keg clear beer, carbonate it up, boom, you're, you know, Bob's your uncle, right? So, but there's a lot of, I don't know, I think there's a lot of myths. And, and I, I did ask um, John Palmer at the end of our interview um, for any myths that he thought, uh, we're going around in the brewing community. And so, um, uh, you know, again, that video is on my channel. Just type in John Palmer, you know, whatever, and you'll see, you'll see it. Um, I think we spent about an hour talking, but if you want to jump to the end and just see that part of it, where he talked about some of the myths, there are a lot. And um, the stir plate thing, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to insult anybody or anything like that. If you've got a stir plate and you're proud of it, maybe it's got a, like a blue LED in there and everything. Great. You know, it, it's it's certainly a help. If you've done an experiment with two, with one with one with and one without stir plate, I'd love to hear if there was a difference in the taste of the beer. You know, it's like I have this turntable. Okay, this is off topic, and I'm gonna take a swig, and this is the end of the video, so. Um, before I sign off and talk about shirts and stuff. Um, I have a turntable. It's an Audio-Technica AT LP120 USB. Okay, that's the model. Uh, it's got a built-in preamplifier. You need a preamplifier to, to use a turntable because the, the way it works, it's just you just do. So, um, before you can plug it into an amplifier or your computer or whatever, you need a pre-amplifier. It does stuff to the sound. It kind of reverses the encoding that goes onto the vinyl when they when they cut the vinyl. Um, people are like, okay, it's okay to say the pre-amplifier isn't a very good one that's in there, but there's a switch on the back that lets you use your own pre-amplifier. Okay, so it bypasses the preamplifier in the turntable and lets you send the raw signal to your own equipment and do it yourself. But there's a couple of capacitors in there, in there that are still in the circuit. Even if you're switching this amplifier out of the circuit, there's a couple of caps in there that are still involved. So people are like ripping out this amplifier, even though it's not really being used, but they're tearing it out and they're wiring it directly into their amps and the, according to some of the vinyl forums it really some people think it makes a world of difference other people say it makes no difference at all well i'm going to do an experiment on my vinyl channel as soon as i can get around to it where i'm going to rip mine out of my turntable but i'm not going to rip it out i'm actually just going to rewire and resolder it so it's direct and that way i can put it back the way it was you know so that I can have the turntable the way it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna do a comparison and you're gonna see the way I do the experiment and the way I compare the before and after, you will know absolutely without the shadow of a doubt if there's any difference. Because the way I'm gonna reverse the phase and can't, you know, do a cancellation test, and I'll explain all this in the video on my vinyl channel, it's Vinyl TV on YouTube. 
I'll put the link uh, down below as usual. And uh, I can't wait to see if all this hype about tearing this preamplifier and butchering your turntable is actually going to make it sound better. And I, I listen, if I if I if I'm wrong, hey, that's the information that we get. And uh, if I'm right in saying that I don't think it's going to make any difference. That's the information that we get too. So it's interesting to be able to do your own experiments. And before you are, you know, hell bent on a particular procedure or a particular gadget, I think you should really, well, you can either just take the easy route and believe what everybody says or you can do your own experiments and find out the truth. And then you can make a video or post it online and be part of the information that's out here on the brewing community. That's what I hope to do with this turntable thing. As far as the starter plate thing, I'm probably not gonna do it because I don't have a starter, I don't have a stir plate. So I'm not gonna try to do that. But somebody should, somebody should do that. Make a 10 gallon batch, split it in half, stir plate, no stir plate, same yeast. Tell us what you think. Do a blind test, get your wife to swap the things around, and see if there's any difference. I would love to see that. Anyway, that's this week's Homebrew Wednesday or weekly or Homebrew or Craig's Corner, or Craig's Dungeon, whatever the hell you wanna, whatever the heck you wanna call it, there it is. That's just hanging there right now. Eventually I'm gonna have this whole thing rearranged. I'm gonna have some stuff hung up on the walls. I got a couple of pictures, that thing. And you know, it's gonna be nice in here, but it's just gonna take so long to do. Stuff all over the place here. It's gonna take so long because this is like a puzzle down here. It's a small basement. And it's like one of those little square puzzles where you move the little like tiles around to get it in the right order it's like that's what i gotta do i gotta move this there i'm you know trying to get things rearranged and it's tough but this is the beginning of it that'll probably inspire me to get going and get this place organized so thank you so much for watching this week's homebrew update whatever the hell it's called tgtshirts.com hey man it's not just a shirt, it's a help to me too, if you do buy one. I appreciate all the people who have. So um, with that, I'm gonna say cheers to you guys, 17, and please visit 17brewcrew.com. And uh, what else should I mention? Is there anything else? Cause I keep forgetting every single week. Craig Talk, uh, visit my Craig Talk channel. I haven't posted anything there in a long time, but I'm, also, I'm gonna be starting to do vlogs on there. I used to only use it for like talking about like weird stuff like space and time and Stephen Hawking stuff, you know. But now I'm just going to go on there and just vlog normal everyday stuff that doesn't have to do with homebrew. Because listen guys, I do other things than drink beer and make beer. I have other hobbies and I'd love to share those things with you guys and let you guys in more a little more into the inner workings of my life and how what I do and what goes on in my mind on a daily or weekly basis that doesn't have to do with brewing beer. So it's Craig Talk on YouTube. If you want to subscribe, please do. And I'll be getting ready to post more videos on there real soon. That's very satisfying, actually. It's got a little groove around there. It's kind of cool. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching. Cheers.